Welcome to TSW Comics. A monthly look between the covers of Marvel's Star Wars comic book series. Hello everyone, welcome to TSW Comics issue one, the first main release of this new show that we're doing, our monthly show, a look at comic books. I'm Mark. And I'm Rob Gast. And we're here, we're doing this uh, issue in Star Wars, in Orlando for Star Wars Celebration 2017. Yes, so this is probably the first and probably one of the only face-to-face -face we'll have living so far apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing this is going to be, and audio, audio quality will be slightly different to what it usually would be. Of course, because we're uh, on you were yeah using the portable units and everything else, and we're in the wild. So that's yes, we're weird. we're in America. <laughs> so this uh, this issue of the podcast, we're going to be looking at issue number one of the Darth Maul comic from Marvel. Uh, but before we get to that, we've got a couple of things we want to cover. Um, a couple of bits of comic news. Well, one major bit of comic yes. news. Um, we, we are in celebration, so there might be something that drops at the Marvel panel over the next couple of days. Um, if that happens, we might put something out in addition to this. Um, but for now, we've just got um, this Marvel, um, us slated to release the 30 years of Star Wars comic book slipcase um, with a ton of great comic books and a hefty price tag to match. Um, what do you think of this collection that's coming out? I, uh, personally, I like it. Um, I like I We talked about on episode zero how I collect the uh, the physical copies every week, so um, when it comes to Star Wars, I don't have the trade paperbacks. Right. And what I like about trade paperbacks is they're on your shelf, mm -hmm. and they're great for reference, and they look pretty. And but of course, if I literally just if I have them in a in a in a, in a long box in my office, I'm obviously if I've already purchased them, I'm not going to buy the trade paperbacks. But when stuff comes out in a pretty package, yeah, <laughs> and they give and you lot, gorgeous. they give you lots of content, then I will be more apt to buy this because this this thing involves it's 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 amazing. They, uh, you, what are we going to go over? What do we have? Yeah, what we got inside. So we've got Star Wars: The Phantom Menace. Um, it's the premiere hardcover. Mm -hmm. um, Attack of Clones hardcover. Revenge of the Sith hardcover. A New Hope: Empire Strikes Back. Return of the Jedi hardcovers. Uh, the Journey to the Force Awakens, Shattered Empire, another hardcover. So I guess that when they're saying hardcovers, they're, yep. they're talking about these collected. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, they're not the trades; they're a little bit higher yeah. quality. The nice spines, one of you. Um, so yeah, Force Awakens, um, premier hardcover, Star Wars Volume One, Darth Vader Volume One, Heroes of a New Hope premiere. Marvel covers, which is something I'd be interested yes. in seeing that art, a compendium of that art, and uh, and, a, and a poster, a, set, a yes. box poster. Yeah, and I already have I already have New Hope, Empire, and Jedi on hardcover from Marvel on my bookshelf. Right. So, yeah, it's a little bit of doubling up, but you're still getting a lot of books for yeah. your money in addition. You could, I suppose, you could always sort of pass those original ones along oh, of course yeah yeah exactly and i already have obviously i have all the uh the vader and uh, the force awakens ad adaptation and I, all the new marvel canon mm. i have all of those on on the regular weekly paperback so yeah it's a little doubling up for me but considering obviously we're we're hosting a, a star wars marvel comic podcast yeah it's very nice. tsw comics so obviously this is right up my alley so I, I think I, I think I, we know what the final price tag. I think it's uh, three hundred and fifty US dollars. Wow, which is pretty, <laughs> which is pretty steep. But I don't know if that's the final price. Um, we might find out a little bit more this this weekend about this release. Um, it's not something I would go for, but I'm the other side of the coin to you. I know that mm -hmm. you, your pull list is all physical copies. Yes, and I only read digital. So to me, the book is never going to. This is artwork for you. Yeah, yeah this uh, I can just get in and look and, and digest the stories. And if I want to go back, I can go back repeatedly. And I, I don't have to worry. I'm not likely to back and board my iPad every right. time I finish reading a copy. Well, this is something for me, something maybe um, with, 
we've had a lot of funds go to Star Wars this year, obviously. Because yep. we're, 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 we're recording from Orlando, so um, maybe this might make it on my Amazon wish list. Yeah. For, for, for a birthday or a... Or, or Christmas or... or a, or if you find the TSW Comics wish list on my Amazon account, yeah, exactly. you can just gift it to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. It's a really lovely set. I like it. it it's not something I would ever own, um, and I don't have the need for it because of because of being all digital. But I like the yeah. the idea behind it. And again, it. and like I said, it, it satiates that need for having for wanting something on the shelf. I mean, and like I said, what I mentioned before, once you're once you you go to the comic book store and you go through the ritual of getting your comic book pulls for that week and you go home you spread them out i i usually take a picture of mine and i tweet them right away so yeah, i let I everybody that. know what i'm <laughs> what's yeah, on my good. list so um i got this whole and then i of course uh, doing what we do the star wars ones go right to the top of the stack on my nightstand and i'm reading at night and then once they're read and if they're if they're of interest and they're reviewed then they get taped up. I tape up the back of the the bag, and it goes in the long box, and probably never seen again unless it's needed for reference material. Yeah. So this is pretty cool because I can, if this was on my shelf, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll read Phantom Menace tonight again. Yeah. You know, because if it's right there, you can just pull it off and. I do have some of these hardcovers in my in in a collection from a previous life. Where I would buy <laughs> physical comics. I, right. I was talking to Ash about this today. Uh, Daredevil: Born Again is something that I've owned for over twenty years in, right. in a hardcover, and that's been read yep. repeatedly. Um, but I like having those 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 things there. I also own it digitally now, so whether yeah. that physical thing's ever going to get touched again, <laughs> I don't know. But they do look great on the on the shelf with the spines on display. They look fantastic. Yes. So, well, like I, like I said, it's it's one of those. Yeah. Do I need it? No. You know I mean? do, do, I have, do I have space for it? Eh, I could probably make space for it. Do I want <laughs> what, it? Yeah, of course. What I a do. sweet disposition. That <laughs> is. <laughs> okay, right. Let's get into um, this month's focus. Then this this issue one of Darth of Darth Maul. Darth Vader, Darth Maul. Um, so let's start with the the way we're structuring this. Um, podcast every week our notes will lay out a little roadmap for us so um Darth Maul number one which platform did you read it on after everything we've just said yeah, after we just said <laughs> what platform <laughs> did you read it on I oh. read it on my floppy paperback yeah. the, the, the day it came out and I grabbed uh, I grabbed issue one out of the uh, comic book store on talkstarwars.co.uk book forward slash books I grabbed issue one from there uh, which came to me from Amazon and read in the Marvel app. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very pleased with that little purchase there. Um, so should we just let's just jump into this story reca recap then. So I've written out a really long synopsis and I don't know why I bother doing it, but um, basically we find we find Darth Maul here. I'm gonna I'm gonna paraphrase. I'm not gonna yeah, go of course, yeah. to that, but we find Darth Maul chomping at the bit so to speak that's a colloquialism is that does yeah. that make sense to you yeah he, he's eager really to, eager. to um to kill jedi to take to, down yeah. jedi because this is this is uh is it a year before phantom menace the events of it, phantom menace it's set before phantom menace right and it's clear that um you've got our two main sith lords at that period at odds with each other because darth maul wants to wants to go and start and when we see him when we first join him in this book he's hunting wrath tiles which i thought was a nice mm -hmm. callback to the force awakens yep on some alien planet and he's definitely trying to hone his skills because he's ready to start targeting jedi yes and and all due to darth sidious so he's training him to to be able to to kill jedi and to want to Mm -hmm. kill jedi so his entire life he's he's been trained to do this and now he's getting to the point where he wants to go out and just oh just give me a jedi to kill but of course as we all know how in in the god seat we know yeah. darth sidious goes no no we can't be revealed just yet because that's going to happen when in uh, in phantom menace and as as uh palpatine's plan starts to unveil so the Emperor, or he's not the Emperor at the time, but uh, Palpatine doesn't want Darcidus to to let the let the galaxy know the Sith are back. Yeah, he actually accuses him of jeopardizing his plans, isn't he? Yes, For, because he's um, he's too eager and too um, 
and to, he's willing to take too many risks just to quench his thirst, his yes. blood thirst. Yeah. Um, and uh, and obviously Darth Sidious, not going to sit still for that. So that's a really interesting dynamic that I never saw in Phantom Menace, and I think it's a really it's a really nice little um, augmentation to the existing story to show that there's. Yeah some friction between those two characters yeah because we got a little taste of the uh of of darth maul's eagerness mm -hmm. when uh from the balcony scene where uh, finally yeah. oh okay when he sends him the tatooine to check out what's going on he's just oh, yes finally but we never we don't get to see uh, uh darth sidious annoyance almost as we see in this comic like this oh like i don't need this hothead to go and jeopardize yeah a, a thousand year plan in the making yeah there's no so because I, I guess that's a that's another pin in the map for Sidious's progression like you can see his plan starting to come together now yes so maybe he's relaxing a little bit whereas in this book he's anything but relaxed and that comes across from more when he's he's very fearful of what the retribution might be if he fails his master yes he, he won't survive the punishment no that his master gives out if uh, if he's to wander too far from the parameters that have been set for him, he's very limited in what he can do. So he watches Jedi from the alleyways and Coruscant. And yes, and that and they know they can sense something there. So he's taken a lot of risks. Yeah, he's flirting with yeah with 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 uh, with facing the Jedi. And he just you know he wants that moment that we finally see on screen in Phantom Menace where he reveals himself in all of his tattooed, haunted yep. glory. <laughs> um, and he, right here, now he's having to rein all that in and try and keep it, try and keep that discipline, keep it in control. And I, I really found that interesting. Yeah, it was good. It was, it was really, it, and it was also Maul is is unique now. Um, He's one of these characters, and now, especially in uh, now that we're past Twin Sons, and we have a, we have of course spoilers, but we have uh, anybody listening to this, I'm sure knows yeah. that Maul is no longer with us in canon. Um, he, he perished by the hands of Obi Wan on uh, the Rebels animated series. So now we have this bookended character, and I think everybody's knee jerk reaction after Phantom Menace. They saw them all cut in half, and because of all the promo and all the hype and all our personal expectations and how awesome his performance was, uh, that character in Phantom Menace, it's like, oh, it's like, oh, we're almost ripped off here a little bit because you have such a great character, uh, a great story, I mean, like a great, like this is, he's, he's awesome he leaps off especially a comic page it's fantastic yeah, yeah. leaps off the page leapt off the screen captured everybody's interest and then all of a sudden he's gone after so by the time we're walking out of phantom menace we don't have him anymore and you you find yourself oh well that's a shame then of course clone wars comes brings him back and then rebels had him as well so i think because we were teased with darth maul now when we get anything like it's his little backstory yeah. Any little nugget now is like, oh, this is because we've accepted him now as this m massive character that uh, that is loved by a lot of people that just think he's he's a great villain. Now all these little nuggets and this, I think this comic is great because we get this little, we get more Maul. More Maul is good, <laughs> and and it kind of works as well. Hopefully, because obviously we're we're early in the series, but it might act as an as an act one for the character. Yes. So it'll set the stage and we'll get to see him through a certain lens and then by the time we get to Phantom Menace, we'll see him off the chain. Yeah. And then when we pick up with him again in Clone Wars and everything that happens in Rebels, that's the, the guy's final act. Of course. So you'll see you'll see a fully formed Maul having learnt the lessons he yep. learnt in the first two acts of his story. Now, just a uh, prediction. I can I can see this com the, 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 these comics going, maybe they'll have three or four in this, the new arc. And then they'll pop back to maybe a like a flashback book kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe some training. That would, yeah, maybe that some training panels in in a, in a in a in a memory, you know, uh, sequence, or maybe how he was found. And I, I know a lot of this was answered in uh, Darth Plagueis. Yeah. But again, now that's Legends. Yeah. So we get a blank canvas that they can borrow from. But you know, now we how does how is Maul end up with? 
Darth Sidious? How does you I mean? How does all this happen? All these yeah. new questions that have to be answered again. And why as well? Because we still we understand that there is a rule of two, and one to have the power, and one to crave the power. But we don't really know how the master is really serviced beyond having like Sidious had Maul is right. kind of like his pit bull. Um, there's an opportunity here for the storytellers to sort of colour in a little bit more detail into the rule of two and explain yeah. exactly why Sidious chose Maul. Because because be as he stands now, he's almost he almost looks like a uh, like the Inquisitor Inquisitors are. Yeah. He almost seems like like you said the muscle. Yeah. He's not the Sith, but he, we know he is. We know he is. You know, there's always two, so we know he is the apprentice, mm -hmm. and he is yes, he is an actual. You know he's Darth Maul, so we know he's more than muscle. But maybe now we'll get more than because all we've seen is muscle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we see later on when he's kind of in Rebels and he's the old master. We're getting we're getting something very different. Yes, he's still quite capable physically, but he's not he, Darth anymore. He's not Darth. He's more, but he's more cerebral. Yep. And he's informed by the events of his life and. In this series, I think we might see um, what you said. We might see some flashbacks to the training, but we also might get to see some of the gaps filled in between Clone Wars and Rebels and find out how we go from him on Mandalore to where we find him again in Rebels. Yes. So there's a big gap in time yeah. there. And what did he... We, knew, we know that when he was defeated by Sidious at the end of the Clone Wars animated series and told that... He hadn't outlived his usefulness for mm -hmm. Sidious yet. What was that about? There's a whole untold story in there. Yep. So it's going to be very interesting to see if they did, if they did it in a comic book. It'd be very interesting to see what yes. that is and how that helps shape the guy we would know as Maul. Yes. And again, for for our first book, it was great. Um, I I reviewed it the the day it came out, and I give it eight point five out of ten. Now. We've explained this in episode zero. That 8.5 is compared to... I, I'm doing any of my ratings compared to any the new Marvel canon that's coming out. Other Star Wars canon. I'm not comparing it to The Dark Knight. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not yeah, saying no. it's a point and a half below The Dark Knight Batman. No, of course not. I'm, I'm just saying as uh, um, the new Marvel Star Wars, that's where I'm sitting it. You know, that's what I like. You yeah. know, like the... It's it, the Poe Dameron. I mean, uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of. I like them, but that would get a lower rating. Like, so it's it, an 8.5 sounds. Oh my God, that's that's a, a must buy. Well, compared to the other Star Wars, yes, it's a, it's a great buy. It's yeah. it, it's a great book. As a Star Wars fan, you're gonna love it. But maybe a, a non Star Wars fan might pick it up, be entertained by it, but might not get that rating. Yeah, I'm a little bit more. I'm I'm less inclined to stack rank and point things when I review them um, because my my opinion will be my opinion is very subjective and I like the metric that you're using because you're you're grading it across it's contemporaries everything yes. else that's in that sit yeah. in in Marvel's current crop of products and um, I can't do that because I don't pull I don't have the extensive pull list that you do for those books but what I can say right now is my review for this book would be that I'm sticking with it Yes, absolutely. Well, that and that's that's just it. Like, let's say um, I haven't reviewed um, uh, Poe Dameron for the site, like uh, my written reviews. But if I did, I prefer right as it stands now. I prefer the small book over the Poe Dameron book. Now, my rating only tells you, like, oh, this 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 guy has an opinion. What should I? I mean, like, yeah, um, am I going to pull this book or this book? Well, I'll go to his ratings. Oh, he obviously preferred Darth Maul. Well, maybe I'll give that a try. You know, yeah. so it, that's all it's for. It's nothing. It's not. Uh, it's not sliding the no. Poe Dameron. No, <laughs> it's not. You and I want to be very positive about exactly. these things. If it got to a point where this this became a book that I couldn't, I wouldn't justify the time in reading. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be because it's not well written or it's not. Um, well illustrated because this book looks fantastic yep. and I thought it, it worked very well it was very well, well written and it flowed nicely and there's some interesting elements in there that build on what we appreciate in canon anyway um, it would purely be because 
the chemistry isn't there between me and this book and I would put right. it down the way I did with Obi-Wan yep. and Anakin. I just couldn't justify the time. I wasn't getting enough out of it. So I put that down. But yeah. we'll we'll be we'll be honest, but we'll yep. be fair and we'll try and we'll try and be as positive as possible. Absolutely. But um, my final thoughts on Dark Mole number one, I like where it's going. The art's fantastic. It's well written. The and Darth Maul is just it's perfect for the comic book page. Like just like it just jumps out at you. Like he's just yeah. he's he's and and when you see these artists get a hold of a character like that, like I'm personally I'm not a I I'm not an artist. So but can you imagine how fun, how much fun yeah. Darth Maul would be able to draw. Such like, good he's such a good looking character and yeah. There's nice things that I think work really well on film and they look great in even little details like how his horns look under the hood of his cloak. Yeah. That looks great on film. It looks fantastic in this book. It gives the character a really distinctive sort of silhouette in the frame so you just know who it is you're looking at immediately. Exactly. And it's, it's, it's really nice to have that, especially when you tear through a book really, really quickly. You want to know where you are and who you're dealing with immediately yeah. every time, and that, I think they nailed that in this book. They did, yeah. And we should mention, uh, written by Colin Bunn, and the, the artist was Luke Ross. Luke Ross, yeah. It's it, a great, a great cast of creatives on this on this book, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into for future issues when we get to the the end of this podcast. We'll decide what we're going to do right. next month, but I, I would my money would be. Continuing with Continue, the series, yeah. I think. Um, right, okay, so that's Darth Maul number one. Uh, we're really interested to hear your points of view on this book and your reaction to it and any insights that you might have taken from it. And that we would place in our listener feedback section, which is going to be at the end of every episode uh, or every month in, right. our, in our episode of TSW Comics. So this month we had a, an issue that popped up in the news um, which uh, I'll let you explain, Rob, and then we'll lead straight into um, to Tim's voicemail this month. So what is this thing about with the digital code redemption? Yeah, um, when you buy Marvel Comics now um, for, uh, and it's, I just know for the Star Wars run, there is a little sticker inside and you peel it and you get a digital code so you can get the digital copy of that same book. Now, apparently there they're what are they, is it they're upping the price and adding a couple or are they well i think the uh, th from what i understood from uh, i think nathan initially tabled this topic for discussion in the group and and tim's brought it to us on email it's um it's about the fact that marvel dropped the pr the practice for a little while there right uh, and now they they've brought it back in but let's listen to um let's listen to tim's voicemail and then we'll address we'll yep. address the issue from there. Hey, Mark and Rob, it's Tim from over the Nerd Room Podcast. Hope you guys enjoy yourselves on a Star Wars celebration. I know you're potentially recording a TSW Comics episode while you're down there, and I wanted to get your take on a recently released statement from Marvel that say they're walking back on their controversial and dramatic shift to their digital comic formatting. Now, the controversy started back in February when Marvel announced a new digital code redemption program where their individual codes that usually came with their single issues would no longer be for that issue you purchased, but for a group of comics, effectively acting as a promotional tool. So if you brought the second issue of Maul, you'd get an X-Men book, a Thor book, and an Avengers book. Now, this can be overall a positive because it exposes you to a much wider breadth of comics characters and stories but to the flip side of that you lose all the freedoms that you get with your digital codes now i'm a physical comic book reader and i love the collecting aspect of it but i'm also a huge fan of the digital copies not only does this give you the freedom and a little more for your 3.99 price tag but also gives you the ability to take your comics on the run on vacation and also revisit issues without having to pull them out of the boards and bags now this recent announcement that happened in march that they were walking back on this and reverting back to their old digital code formatting where you'd get that digital code for that single issue you purchased is a very much welcome from my point of view. And I'm thoroughly excited for this. And you know what? Even better, you still get those three random books chucked in there. So it's the best of both worlds. I'd love to hear your guys' take on this, how you read your Star Wars comic books, and how you're doing it down Star Wars Celebration. Looking forward to your answers, guys. Keep up the awesome work. Thanks very much. Tim. Great stuff. So it was... It's really, it was a change to the practice 
a fundamental change to the practice right. that ruffled a lot of feathers. So no longer will you, the, the code that you redeemed would not give you the book that you bought with the code. It would give you like teasers of right. other books. Yeah. So full, full issues of other books. They, yeah, they were basically, they were trying to hook you into other, Yeah. because obviously if you walked in and you bought the, the physical copy, you've already purchased that. They don't have to, they don't have to tempt you to buy that copy again. So now they're tempting you to start reading other stuff, yeah. which is obviously a fantastic idea. One thing I didn't like about the uh, the digital redemption was I tried it once and it worked out great, but you open the book and you have to peel this little sticker oh, off. Yeah. So now you have a page in your comic that is slightly, like the, the glue on the sticker is there, um, it's now is the comic complete because you peel the sticker off it, it might tear a bit it might and I know it sounds like a nitpick but as comic book collectors anybody knows a slight tear on an inside page or a slight glue smudge or a slight well where's the digital sticker can if you're putting together an entire collection it's 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 an issue that's an interesting point of view because I I hadn't thought about that. Does it scar the page in any way when you peel something off the back of it? Does it scar um, the front of that page? No, you get a, like a tiny, tiny little bit of glue resin. If you're rough with it, it'll obviously tear. Yeah. You mean you can be careful with it, but you're still removing something from the book. Removing something from the book, and now the book is not complete. Yeah. As far as especially, and if if we were collecting Hot Wheels out of the box, maybe not a big issue. Mm -hmm. But because we're dealing with comics. And we know how fickle the collector is. Yeah. We're taking these precious little things that used to sit on newsstands and we're buying them in bags and boards and we're gently taking them out and carefully reading them and then placing them back. The digital copy is great because then you got a reference. You don't have to worry about taking yeah. your, your, your comics in and out of their boards or in and out of their boxes. You don't have to worry about storage. And it's a great idea, but the problem is with your when you're redeeming it, you're... Your, the whole reason to have a digital copy is not to ruin your yeah, and you're your ruining, physical copy, you're and your you're ruining your that, physical yeah. to get your digital. Yeah. So, so but, the, but is there are there degrees are there tiers of collectors where the people to whom that matters won't uh, indulge in that digital copy? They'll they'll keep their book pristine, and they they either won't care about a digital copy, or maybe they'll buy two floppies. Yes. One to bag and board. One to get the code, the code, and then they get the code. Or and is there a mid ground where you've got someone that would is quite happy to buy the comic book? We'll take that code out without any concerns about the, yeah, the if, issues you just outlined. I'm sure there's people out there still that buy the book, throw it in their magazine rack in their washroom or yeah. whatever there, and and let it get wrinkled and and they just don't care about it. Um, but I'm pretty sure eighty percent of the people that are going to their local store and buying the books while the code is still is is still valid um like my mind i did it once and i haven't done it since and i own every yeah. star wars Mar marvel comic from their new run so i just because i just don't want to ruin because i i have i have them all why do i yeah. want to no i think you know it's a, it's a valid the point you're making is valid and i like to just address tim's one of Tim's questions there directly, um, what do we think about them walking this practice, walking slow walking back the decision they made so that the code gives you the actual book you bought and as Tim pointed out, also gives you the additional magazines that will broaden your reading horizons potentially. You're getting those as well, which I think is incredible value for money. Yeah. And it's a great and it's a great marketing tool because we all know only the first taste is free. So mm -hmm. next month's comic book, when you pick up that code, it's not going to give you the the next issue or the next volume of the freebies you got the month before. Right. You're going to end up with a wide variety of books that you can taste and test and, and work out whether or not that's suited to your taste. I think this, this is a great, it's a great thing. It's great that they slow walked it back so that it's more in, in keeping with the purpose it was designed yes. to, to service, which is give you a digital version of that book so you can bag and board and not um, damage it with repeat readings. But to give these freebies away as well is absolutely spot on. I think it's a, it's a great idea. Yeah, oh no, I, th I think the idea is fantastic. Mm. I wish there was a little, 
it's so hard because you don't want somebody um, going to their local comic book shop, opening the book, perusing it, memorizing the four digits, closing it and going home and reading it for free. They don't even have to memorize it. They got camera in their pocket on this you cell got phone. it yeah so um i think the idea is fantastic i wish there was a little better way so you wouldn't i don't know i don't know how you'd do it like i'm this i'm not i'm just the the complaint come to heart right now i'm not the solutions yeah <laughs> yeah so um i love it i love the idea i think it's great and i think um if you weren't a completionist like myself it's 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 mm. it's good and the and that's great what you said that it kind of answers tim's last point which is how do we consume our comic books? Yes. Uh, you're, you're a purist. You're a, you've got a, a paper pull list yes. every week. Um, and I am purely digital. And I, at this point, I don't think I'm committed to a specific run. I've sort of dipped in and out of the Star Wars comics. I'm mostly invested in Darth Vader. Yeah, I yes. I think Darth Maul is definitely suited to me. I'm already, I've already done issue two. And I've, I've reread it prepping for next month's right. potential, potentially next month's show. And uh, and I'm very much enjoying Dr. Aphra. So that they might have me now hooked on those. Well, maybe, maybe we can touch on that on another episode about uh, maybe is, is a dark side a better comic read? And then the light side, then the then the because then the Obi Wan Anakin or the or the light side yeah. stories. Well, that I mean, that's <laughs> it's good. I mean, everyone you know, you watched yours for the shot. It, yeah. Everyone likes the villain, right? Oh, everyone yeah. likes to boo at the screen. Yeah. And I think that the I think the Star Wars villains are p particularly explosive because they are, they have the potential to be so evil and yeah. so menacing, and that and you know if if a writer gets to layer in some contradictions or mm -hmm. some or some uh, complex mo motivations, then all the better. But. Sometimes it's nice just to watch and, the man in the black hat be a bad guy, isn't it? And, and, right, and artist or not, anybody that's owned um, uh, a sheet of paper and a pencil has sketched Darth Vader yeah, <laughs> in course. their lifetime. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. no, good. I, 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 like where, I like what this book is shaping up to be. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think, yeah, I'm in this. Yes. I'm in this now. And it will be digital from here out, I think. Um, just yeah. to bring us back there to Tim. Yes, to, and the Tim and, and and Tim, thank you, uh, thank you again. Yeah, thanks for you. So if you've got if you've got something you want to add to to that topic, or if you've got another question you'd like to throw our way, or comments on this book, or suggestions for book, anything mm -hmm. you want to reach out to us, then just send us an email at talkstarwarsinfo at gmail dot com. That's talkstarwars i n f o at gmail dot com. And uh, by all means, feel free to recommend Absolutely. runs that you think we should be looking at, or tell me how wrong I am for not enjoying <laughs> Obi Wan and Anakin. <laughs> yes, or even um, uh, well, what do you, what do you like about it? Like I know uh, when I read the physical copies, yes, I like the physical copies. I like pulling it out. I like turning the pages, but also too, it's it's for me, it's ritual. Yeah, I have what I do on on my Wednesdays. I know I I go to the store and I get my polls, and it's 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 almost uh, it's almost the same argument you hear people um, that in, enjoy el albums rather than their MP3s. Yeah, you know, and, and, like, we're not going to get into that argument, but it's it's the same thing. It's it's a, it's a ritual. Yeah, because you 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 have your purists in all areas. Yes, don't you? you have audio files and cine files, and mm -hmm. and it's people that really take their enjoyment to the nth degree, and that becomes a part of the passion for them yes. this building the perfect environment or building the perfect installation to enjoy your film or to enjoy your music it's not all hipsters it's no, not all no, hipsters no, that want to hear the, the pop and the hiss of vinyl it's just they're the things that I love I've got a, a stack of comic books that I've carried with me from childhood I love flicking through those loose leaf yeah. issues but that doesn't fit into my lifestyle now no. there's no brick and mortar store near me that i can go to i can get the paper copies out the talk star wars store yeah um but i choose digital because that means i've got that on my phone i've got that on my ipad anytime i want to go into that book for any reason if there's something i've noticed and i want to share it with someone i could grab that page yep. straight away it's there it's ready to oh you you out. can't beat the convenience and again that's pulling comics for me is my that's that's my cigarette that's my my box of beer that's my you know i mean that's just my yeah. whatever you do i mean that's that's my thing so yeah. and i think if and again that that goes from the from the small businessman too if if 
if the guy that I buy comics off of, if the if the experience wasn't as great as it is, yeah, maybe you'd be turned off too. Like it's yeah. a whole thing, you know. Yeah. Well, got they're not these comic book stores. They're not the impenetrable fortress they used no. to be. No, they're more inclusive now. When you wander in and you just want to start, you want to pick something up yes. and start reading. It's it's not as difficult as yes. it used to be. And and also too, if you're gonna if you are gonna go the way of of uh, creating a pull list, you mean um, it's 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 fun. It's 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 you know it can it can get out of control if you let it. But also too, if you have a pull list, make sure you honor your pull list. I can't tell you how many times you hear of these small shop owners that have that order extra to to accommodate people that want stuff reserved for them and then they never show up to pick it up yeah it's just horrible but anyway that's that's another again another no, that's topic. a good that's a good tip for cotton see i don't have hey. to worry about that no nope. <laughs> no you don't <laughs> but is it as a good tip for for comic collectors to consider the consider the sources yeah exactly okay so what we're going to do on next month's episode are we going to do number two of ball or do you want to do do you want to do a quick review of number two of Maul on the next episode and then look at another another book in the same episode? So we've got to let this thing grow and become what it wants exactly, to become. Exactly, yeah. Well I know um I know on the horizon we got Vader coming. We've got Vader coming. And I wanted us to get hit our stride for yeah, Exactly. Vader. Did you want to uh yeah, we can um I know by the time the next one rolls around, I'm sure Maul Mall three will be out. Yeah. Did you wanna catch up everybody on the mall? And then maybe uh, have a have a little Doctor Afra yeah. conversation. Yeah, let's do that. Let's yeah, let's let's do that because that gives me a chance then to catch up with Afra. Yep. Uh, and then I can get myself up to speed. So we'll do we'll do a full mall episode next month. Okay. Then we'll do some Afra. Yep. And then we'll settle into Vader. And then we know what's coming. Yeah. And yeah. And then, and by that time, you guys, you can get involved and let us know what you're thinking and what's working for you because we want you to be able to. We think they're like a comic book club, so we yeah. want you to be able to. If this is something that you're reading along with us, that's great. And if it's something you'd rather we dropped and make room for something exactly. else, exactly. And also that. too, and we know with three titles that come out a month now, because or uh, or we'll have the well four or five. We'll have the the Poe Dameron if we want to get into, and we have the the, the main run. We're gonna have Vader. We're gonna have Doctor Afra. We mm-hmm. have Darth Maul. So we we can't go blow by blow, book by book. But we'll try to wrap things up as best we can, and yeah. you know, on a monthly show that'll be difficult. You, you got it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. Well, that's us done then for issue number one, and you would have noticed we are going to refer to these as issues. Yes. Of these podcasts from now on, because we think it's cute, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and sometimes that's enough. Okay, so until next month, I'm Mark. You can find me at Talk Star Wars on Twitter, and I'm Rob. And you can find me at Robert MMM Cast on Twitter, and we'll see you next month. Later. Talk Star Wars is a proud member of the Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network. Find us at StarWarsCommonwealth.com alongside The Tumbling Saber Podcast. The Generation X-Wing Podcast. The TSW Roundtable. The Skyhoppers Podcast. And the Nerd Room Podcast. Head to StarWarsCommonwealth.com and take your first steps into a larger world. Let's talk about Loot Crate. Are you on a quest for epic gear, housewares and collectibles? Loot Crate offers an epic range of pop culture items for less than $20 per month. Whether you're shopping for the geek in your life or you are that geek, Loot Crate is the best surprise you know is coming. Every month there's a different theme and new and exclusive items that you can only get with Loot Crate. Treat yourself every month or give the gift of geeking out to a friend or a loved one. You have until the 19th at 9pm Pacific to subscribe and receive that month's crate. And when the cutoff happens, that's it, it's over. Make sure to head to lootcrate.com forward slash talkstarwars and enter the code talkstarwars and save $3 off your new subscription today.